Yeah. Thanks for talking. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, and thank you for joining me. My name is Dee Marie, and I'm with FAF Facebook Live today. We're going to be doing Shape Creator, and I'm going to show you a couple of samples first, and once we get started. But first, I'd like to thank Bethany, who's in the studio with me today. Hi, guys. And she's going to be my support because this is my first time. I'm a bit nervous, so. You've got this. Me. <laughs> You've got this. And if you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat, and I'll be sure to let Dee Marie know, and so she can answer those questions on the live today. And we, yes, thank you, Bethany. Oh, and you're we welcome. We also need to thank Ryan, Meredith, and Amy. They're in the background. Our technical support. They'll be hopefully on a lot too. Yes. Yes. And let's see, um, if you want to give me your name and where you're from, I might have said that already, but we're just getting started here. So I want to make sure I don't repeat myself too often. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, again, we're going to be working on the Creative Icon 2 today and talking about Shape Creator and what it can do. Uh, it's got lots of designs in it. It's uh, got shapes like circles and flowers and stars that you can add stitches to or you can add designs to and make letters also is, is one of the features, one of the shapes. There's the open letters and then there's the closed letters. So it's really a lot of fun. I'll show you a couple of samples in a little bit to see what we've done. We have some people tuning in from all over. We've got people from Alaska, California, British Columbia, up in Canada, Maine. Welcome. Another person from Alaska. This is great. We have a lot of people excited to learn about this today. Welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm excited to show you. So let's get started a little bit. Let me show you a couple samples to begin with. And here's one that has a, the circle. And I stuck to this ball colors just to, you know, because it is fall. Maybe not here in Nashville yet, but it, it's getting there. <laughs> and then this is some of the letters I was telling you about. So that is fun. I just wrote out so and filled it in with some designs and it makes a nice display or you can make a wall hanging out of it. It's nice for your sewing room. So let's get started and we do shape creator in the embroidery mode of, of um, the embroidery, the machine. And I'm just going to get out of this menu right here. And in order to start shape creator, you just touch on the shape creator below, and I'm not sure if you can see where I just touched, so just I'm going to tilt the phone a little bit. The whole screen is so big on this creative icon, too. We can't fit it into one frame and get close enough for y'all to see what she's clicking on. So we're going to move the camera around a little bit so you guys can see better. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to get out of where I am, so I'm going to start over and show you what I clicked on. And I'm clicking on the shape creator down here in the bottom toolbar. It's the second one from the right, and it's got like a star and a circle. And then we're going to go up a little bit and touch the star in the circle there and see that we have dingbat shapes and we have basic shapes. I'm going to start with the basic shape and I'm going to choose a square. Just touch the square and then I'm going to get out of this menu by touching the same um, button again so that we can see the full screen. And then we can, this is the square, so the shape that we're going to start with and you can make it into a rectangle also, which is what I'm going to do. And let me see if I can adjust this again. I'll get used to this. Sorry about that. And uh, so if you touch edit shaping, this is where you can determine the size of your shape. So I'm going to bring it up just a little so you can see the bottom of it. And I'm going to go into my sizing. And that's the, the second button in from the left on the right hand side. And then I've got my machine in inches. So you can do inches or millimeters. So I've got inches. If you want to change it to millimeters, you just go up to settings up here and select machine and then go down to units. And you see I'm in inches and I could choose millimeters, but I'm going to stay in inches for now because it's a rectangle that I want. And then I'm just going to turn get, okay to get out of there. And then go back to my screen 
Hopefully I'm not making you dizzy by moving around too much. <laughs> it's good. It's better that they can see it up close. Okay. So we're doing good so far. Okay. So I'm going to do a seven inch. So just touch seven and by a five inch rectangle. So I think you can make a label out of this. This is kind of what I'm, um, would be making with this as a label and it depends on what size I want, but I'm just going to do seven by five so you can see it. And I'm going to bring it down a little bit so you can see it a little bit more. That's perfect. Okay. And then I want to just see if I can get. So I'm going to choose a design to put in it. And that's the little flower there. And I'm going to go into my mini designs. If I can scroll over. The minis fit well in like a, a smaller area. So I'm going to choose flower number, let's see, let's do 14 and it'll populate right on the bottom. And then I can also add another design and go into 31. And so you'll notice it's at the top. So I've got one at the bottom and one at the top. And now I want to position my flowers a little better. Right now they're in um, the middle of the line. So I can play with that by going into positioning. Let me show you. So this is my positioning button. And then I can have it go to the bottom. Sorry. Go to the bottom inside so all my design will go onto the inside of that uh, rectangle that i have there's the middle and then i can go into the top outside the circle so and then i can also rotate the way my design goes did you see how it went sideways on especially the pink flower if you can see that and then if i wanted it up on the facing the left or if i wanted it facing down or up and I think I want it up and I want it in the middle so I'm going to leave it like that then I'm going to go into edit shape and so I want to add more and I do I want to duplicate the series so I'm going to choose this position and this uh, duplicate button down here or the repeat button excuse me and so then you touch the plus sign and it puts one flower, then one pink flower, one orange and pink. And just keep adding those. And it's kind of hard when it's adding it around. So I'm going to go back to positioning and I'm going to choose my spacing to be all together on the left. You could do the left, you could do the center, or you could do the right hand side. I wanted to cluster them just because it's a little bit easier when I'm adding. So now I'm going to go back to edit shape and continue to add my flowers. Now, if someone isn't sure which button to click, there is an info button that will tell them what each button on the screen does, correct? Yes, so that if they is. don't remember which one is the yes. repeat button, that's how they can find and, it. And I'm gonna show you, so what Bethany is talking about is this question mark up here. And if I touch that, and then I touch this button here where I was, that's the repeat combination button is what she's talking about. So anytime, and I have to use it because I'm still new or- uh, <laughs> There's a lot machine. of buttons. <laughs> There's a lot of buttons. So, and this is like your uh, rotate button. So it's very easy. Everything on the machine, anytime you don't know what a button is, just touch that question mark up in the upper right-hand corner and then touch the button that you want to um, find out what it does. And you might see me doing that today because I'm nervous and I'm going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put one more design in there and see how the red line came around. That is indicating I have too many designs to fit into my rectangle. So in order to fix that, I'm going to press the minus sign. And now there's enough, more than enough designs, but I don't like these two together. You see where they're side by side the same. So I'm going to take it down one more. Now it's going to leave a gap in between. 
So in order to fix that, just go into positioning. And on your spacing, it's going to evenly space all around that rectangle for you. You know, that's the way you like it. Um, it looks good. Just press your OK. And then it takes you back into embroidery edit. And this is where you can add your lettering or whatever you want to add or not add, or you can start your stitch out. So, um, that's so cool. Thank you. I've had, you know, I have the icon too personally, mm -hmm. and I haven't had a chance to play around with this feature yet. So this is popping a lot of ideas into my head of things I could create. So I want to ask our people that are our friends that are watching, if they have, as they watch you teach this, they have any cool ideas of how they would use this feature for, for projects. They should drop those in the chat yeah. and let us know because that could inspire someone else or even us to try that too. Well, that's a great idea because we're always looking for creative ideas around here. Um, so right now we can toggle back between edit design and shape creator. So if I wanted to go back into shape creator, maybe I wanted to fix something or maybe I wanted to change the size of it and I can go in and do it. So you until you save it into my Sona, you can go between shape creator and embroidery edit, And that's, that's a good thing because then you can play with your designs. And um, I just want to show you a couple other things in positioning. You have control points over here and there's, you probably can't see them really well because I can't see them real well, but they're red dots. And if you take a red dot, you can drag it. Well, not the whole screen, but it's not cooperating with me. So you can just drag it in. And I'm going to use the bar because it's not helped. See how it's changing its shape? So you can change the shape of the shape. See how it went into an oval now instead of a rectangle? So that's kind of cool. You can just put it back into your rectangle. And I like that feature. And it's there's three different control points that you can play with. And some of them get me in trouble and I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> because then I have to delete my stuff and start over again. But um, it's, it's a lot of fun to do that. And if you wanted to change the shape to say a circle, you can just choose a new shape and choose a circle. And it takes your design that you already have and it puts it into a circle. And, or if you wanted to maybe change it to a star, it'll put it into a star. It's that easy. So it's, it's really fun to do. So I'm gonna go back to the um, rectangle. And because it's a square, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to edit shape and then put in my size again by changing the resize button or touching the resize button, touching the size of seven. And what I forgot to tell you earlier is see the little lock in the center. I don't know if you can see Yeah, we that. can see can that. Can you see that? Uh -huh. um, if it's, it's unlocked, which means I'll, when I touch the one that says seven, I can just change that one size. And now I can go to the other and just change and put five in. But if this were locked and I put a seven, it will change both sides. So I have a seven inch square. No, I didn't do it the way I wanted to. I should have a seven inch square. Look. Yeah. So we're getting some feedback on some ideas. So okay. I thought I'd let you know what they're saying yeah. in the chat since you can't see it. Yeah. Um, someone, uh, Jacqueline said, I think a more simple design would be used to for quilting, uh, for quilt blocks, which is a great idea to use this for quilt blocks. Um, Lo Lewis, uh, Lo Lois said, I've used this as a border for a quilt label, which I love. Um, let's see here. The oval would make a really pretty placemat. Anne said that. That's a great idea. Thinking about using the outline areas and printed panels from Roxanne. So there's a lot of oh, really yes. creative ideas and creative people watching yeah, today. Yeah, I'm really glad. Thank you for those ideas. I love them. I love making quilt labels on 
um, the shape creator. The, the and you did one. Yeah. If I you want to hold that up onto that camera yeah. over there. This one? Yeah, we'll do this one real quick. <laughs> yeah. So here's just, this is an oversized quilt label, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how I put the design in and then I just um, put the writing in the middle. So it was kind of fun and it's very, very easy to do that. So I love that. Yeah. So then back here, um, as I, we saw, you can do all kinds of shapes and I'm just going to touch OK again to get back into embroidery edit. And then um, if you wanted all your colors the same size, you can go into layers. Oops, let me Before it. we go into layers, I have another quick question okay. from Roxanne. See if you, you know the answer to this. Okay. Why are there two circles in the basic shapes menu what with is, arrows in different directions? So can you answer that? Great question. So one is a clock, one is a clockwise right circle. <laughs> great question. One is a clockwise circle. And I think that's the first one. And the second one is a counterclockwise. And that's the stitching pattern. So okay. one will stitch clockwise. So if you put your design in, that will go from left to right to right to right And when the, for the stitching. But if you put it in the other, it's going to go the center, and then it's going to go left and then stitch to the right. So it's just kind of depends on what shape your design is on how it's going to stitch. So you want, uh, it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, depends, I guess, the size of the design. I like to use the uh, clockwise, but there are times that I use the counterclockwise too. So it's a personal choice, yeah. but it's a great question. Yeah, that is a good one because I yeah. didn't know the answer to that. So I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank she, you. Heidi said, thank you for that tip. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. So um, let's see. I'm going to just get rid of this because I want to show you something else. One of my favorite things to do. So I'm going to choose that. And then to get rid of it, I'm just using my trash can. I don't know if you probably couldn't see that. I just used the trash can on the bottom to get rid of that design. But I'm going to go back into Shape Creator and, one, and back into the shape. And I'm going to take a basic shape. And... This is the circles you were talking about. Can you so tilt the camera you. up a little? Thank you. There we go. Yeah. Now we see all the circles. <laughs> and I like using this straight one. That's the straight line. So I'm choosing that. And I'm going to go into edit shape. And I am going to rotate it. So I chose my rotation button. And then I'm going to choose. Tilt your camera back down a little. I know it's we've the screen's so Sorry, big, guys. which everybody says they love the big screen, but it is challenging <laughs> it is. for these camera it lives. Building, yes, yes. Yeah. So um, what I did is I chose this um, rotate button, and then I'm just going to choose 90 degrees because I want it up and down. What I'm going to do is um, size it a little bit. So I'm going to put the size, and I want to make it oh maybe about. 12 inches, maybe. Maybe I can put it up like this. And I'm just going to put in a 12. Whoops. Not too 12. So did you see where it turned red? That means it can't go that big. I was trying to make it bigger than I'm allowed to. So I'm going to bring that up so you can see it. So there's my 12 inches. And what I do a lot of times, you can do buttonholes that are evenly paced, uh, placed so you don't have to guess or measure. So this is a great thing. So I'm going to take and I'm going to choose, whoops, I'm going to put my camera up just a little if I can. I'm going to choose stitch and then I'm going to choose my third menu with my buttonholes. And I'm just going to choose the first buttonhole, get rid of that, and then I'm going to add them. See how they're adding? And let's see, one, two, maybe, maybe seven, maybe eight. So to position them, I want to go over to position, and I don't want them that way. I want them in the center. And I want them evenly spaced, which they are. So I don't know why anybody would want to put them all together, but you might be making a project where you want them together. 
So I'm evenly spacing them. And that's as easy as it is to put buttonholes on like a, a cuff or a placket. Oh my goodness, I love that. Yeah, it's really easy. And the other thing you can um, also do, you can add a design. So I'm going to go back and just take it down, down to one. You can't see it because it's kind of hiding in the size. But I'm going to add a design in between each little buttonhole. So I'm going to put a little flower in there. And it didn't go in for me. Let me try that again. There it is. So then I want to um, do my tilt down a little bit. There we go. And Kay said you could also run ribbon through this when you, with those buttonholes, which would be a pretty That's a great cuff idea. for a collar. Yes, or oh. even any kind of design. You can do make a frame and mm -hmm. then just run ribbon around the frame as buttonholes. And we have some really fancy buttonholes you can do that with too. So play with those. That'll be fun. So I'm going to put everyone, see how it's going every other one now? I like that. So I can put a flower in between my buttonholes if I wanted to. That would be so pretty down a button down shirt. Yeah, or a little girl's dress. Yes. Um, and you can put any little character. So you can put a little boat in there if you want for a little boy or yeah. airplanes. And, um, so it's fun to play with that. I love the buttonholes. And if you go into design positioning, you can change the shape of the, the style of the buttonhole so it can go vertical instead of horizontal. And you can be, you, your even, even spacing is in there. So it's very, very simple. And if you wanted to, you can go back in here and you can make another copy of it if you wanted to. And then, whoops. And then you can it. And then you just put your fabric on the hoop and stitch it out. And it's faster than being in sewing mode and having to bring out your measuring tape and <laughs> <laughs> your marking pencil. So that makes it really easy. Just measure the placket and then let the machine do the rest for you. So that's one of my favorites to do. And if you do OK, you can go back into embroidery edit edit the design and you can duplicate it if you want to. So you have two, if you have two plackets or what, if you wanted to stitch out a frame or something, you can um, just do duplicates and make a nice frame or use the frame in the buttonhole. So that makes it nice and easy. I'm gonna get- Roxanne asked if there is an undo button to erase something that you've added. How do you undo that? So you might have to tilt the camera down to show that. Okay, so I'm in right now, I'm in embroidery edit. So I'm gonna go back into- Tilt that camera down so she can see the bottom menu. There we go. Perfect. So let me go back to where I was, Roxanne. Um, I'm gonna go into shape creator and I'm going to go into edit and it's not an undo button, but if I wanted to remove one of these buttonholes or you just have to do the, the minus or you can do your trash can. Okay. Yeah. And then if you wanted to get rid of all the designs in there, just long touch the trash can and it'll ask you if you wanted to delete all the designs and just say yes. Okay. It's very easy. And then if I pressed OK, because it's just a shape, there's nothing in embroidery edit. Mm -hmm. So there won't be anything there until there's a shape in there. So one of the other things I really enjoy doing, this is one of my favorites. See, with the holidays coming, there's wreaths and everything. So I like to go in. Scroll back up. Or oh, turn your camera turn, back up. Turn it back up. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne said thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. And I'm just going to do a counterclockwise. It doesn't, again, it doesn't matter. It's the stitch out. 
um, direction that that counterclockwise and clockwise is in because we're using positioning mm. to uh, determine the direction of the design. Okay, so this is, I want to encore, it's one of my favorite ones to do. And I want to, whoops, I already went in there, so I wanted to go into a design. And I'm going to choose a signature design. And this is exclusive, um, or a signature for FOF. So no other machine has it. And it's, these are really nice designs. And I'm gonna choose, which one was it? Number, actually, I think I went too far. There it is. So I'm gonna choose number seven. And this is um, really nice. So I'm gonna go into positioning. And this is where I can, I'm gonna move this up. Can you see that? And I'm gonna yeah. positioning. Down here. So this is where you can change the um, the way is positioned. So it now it's laying, um, I guess you could call it um, horizontal, and then it's going to flip in um, a mirrored position. And if I wanted it to go on the outside of the circle, I could do that, or on the inside of the circle. And so it just changes it around. And I can flip it. So it can go one way or the other, but I kind of like this one with the center. Okay. So it's on the center. And then I can go back into edit shape. I'm going to add a couple more. And actually, I think I am going to change the shape or the position because I do want it to go up or out. No, I want it to go. I want it to go this way. <laughs> Sometimes I can't decide. So <laughs> then I'm going to go back into edit shape. And this is where you can bring it. I can get it to move with me. This is called Encore. And it's just. So you can bring it in and bring it out. And then when you go into positioning it really gets fun so you can have it just go like that and, or you can just do like it looks like flames and like it, it's just you can just play with a lot of it and you can see how you can center the um, spacing or you can put it to the right or you can put it together and you can also make it look like a wreath. And then if we go into edit shape, we can put more in there and then you can play with the handles. So it'll come get you different looks like that. So it's a lot of fun to play with. And if you combine positioning with edit shape, you can get all kinds of um, fun shapes on there. It'll be a star. It's just fun to play with, but you can make a nice wreath out of the one that you can see there. And That's cool. Yeah, this is this is a looks like, like a snowflake. Yeah, it is. And, and if you pull it in, see how it makes it like a flower. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that's really a neat thing to do. That's what I like to do. And when you put it in embroidery edit, it gives you a better picture. So isn't that pretty? That's very pretty. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one of my favorite things to do is the encoring. I can sit for hours just try <laughs> playing and encoring with the different designs. It's lots of fun. And let's see. So if I wanted to say I wanted to change the color, I can go in, I'm in embroidery edit. So I can just choose layers. Actually, I didn't need to choose layers because there's go into my paint brush. Can you tilt it up just a little bit? Thank you. Thank you. Good thing Bethany's here. Otherwise, you'd be just <laughs> staring at one thing the whole time. So thank you, Bethany. You're welcome. <laughs> So, I'm learning along with you, so I want to <laughs> see it too. I'm over here behind the, the computer, so this so is great. I'm going to select all, and really, 
the color is on the screen it is not particularly the color thread that you're going to be using. So this is just to show you how to change the color. And then you would change your color. And this is where you just play with it. And the color you're changing it to is in the center there. Let me see. That's good. So, and I'm changing it to this green now instead of the little periwinkle, like that. Or if you want to, and you know the thread color number. I tilt it back up for that part. Oops. There we go. So you know the thread color number, you can always choose it a custom number and you can there's so many programmed into here it's, it's with crazy. just about every brand of thread there is yeah. which is really nice so that, that's a nice option for you to or right here you can put in your color number so and i don't know if this is a number or not but i'm going to try it you got about the same color <laughs> that was pretty good okay unusual for me okay and then just press okay and then you want to deselect your select multiple and deselect your palette and now it's a, a green so but it's kind of nice if you had multiple colors you could change um different aspects of it if it was um if you could ungroup it yeah so and and that is possible to do also you'd have to go into layers select all if you ungroup see how they're now individual leaves so maybe I want to make it, each one a different color yeah, or just do every other uh -huh. one and it's uh, kind of fun that way. And then you just choose your paint palette. I think I did this backwards. So I had to select met multiple, excuse me, select multiple. Oh, I already did it. That's weird. There it goes. I'm just pushing too many buttons. So I want to do this purple. See what does it for me. Yay. Perfect. And then you'll see, um, I think I have it on ghost, what I call ghost mode. So that might be why. But that'll, those are the two colors and it just shows up gray so it's showing me i'm going to just stitch out the purple flowers and see how i skipped one i forgot one so then i could go back in and change that and have it stitch out a different color yeah and, but this is a good way to play with your colors and that way when you merge or um, sort they will um, stop at the color change and it's nice to be able to see when you're doing multiple colors, what the design will kind of look like before you stitch it out. Exactly. You don't have to change the colors, obviously, to stitch right. it, but it helps you keep track of which color you need to stitch next in order and everything. It does, thank you. That, yeah, definitely, for sure. So I'm gonna show you a couple more shapes um, that we have. So I'm gonna just edit the design and delete it. I'm gonna select it first. Well, I guess I could, I'm gonna go in here I went into the layers again. I'm just going to select all so it'd be easier for me to trash can them and select them all. And that way I can go back into my shape creator. You know, I want to show you, let me show you a couple more samples that I have. So this is one of the, what they're calling a dingbat. And it's a pair of sunglasses, and this would make a really cute sunglass case or glasses case. And I even thought you could put some mirrored, um, some vinyl in here, yeah. make it kind of cute, or write like um, fun in the sun and the lenses. So that would be kind of fun. And then um, I like this heart. So I got this, and it's on a velvet background. And I don't know if you can see it, um, but the, it's the, like a silvery white on the design to make it stand out a little bit more. And then I have one more, oh, the letter. So I have this letter also, it's an M, and this is the outline letter. The one with the, the word so on it is the non-outline one. 
So that's the difference. You can, there's the color in the middle. And then the last one I like. And this one's my favorite. <laughs> when you showed this to me today, I was so intrigued. So this one I stitched out on a tool. So you can make an, uh, like a little wall design. You can put anything in here. These are, the blue ones here are the buttonholes that I was telling you about, the pretty um, decorative buttonholes. And I just use those as one of my designs. So it looks real pretty when it's hanging on a wall. Um, so that's that's one of my favorites too. I know it's Bethany's favorite. It is, and we have a lot of people saying that they're loving your samples and your they love the heart and the all of them. And Heidi said this is lots of good info here. I'm definitely going to rewatch. Good. I'm glad and to hear it. Joanne said um, asked a question. She said, "Can this only be done in embroidery mode?" Yes. So you could use the, I'm using a creative icon too. You can also, the creative icon has um, shape creator and so does the creative 4.5. Those are the three embroidery machines with FOF that have the ability to do shape creator. It's Four, good to know. Yeah, the creative 4.5 has a basic shape creator, which does not include the dingbats or the letters, but the icon and the icon two do. So that's kind of fun. Fun fact for you. Someone said they would take the mesh one and to and, and design a clock, like to yes. make it look like a clock. And, and I have um, a design that looks like a clock, but I didn't, um, I don't have a sample stitched out. So that's a lot of fun to do. And you can put it even on a, a board, mm -hmm. you know, and hang it in your craft room or kitchen, depending on what theme you use. That's a great idea. Thank you. All right. Okay, and back to the machine. All right. Let's I think see. I have one more um, shape that I wanted to kind of show you. And let me see. I'm in Shape Creator. I'm going to choose a basic. And I wanted to choose the circle again. I might have done this. So I want to go into a stitch. And see, the nice thing about doing this in embroidery, you can use your, these are my sewing stitches. So I can load any of my sewing stitches into my shape creator so that I can get the look that I want. So I want to take these little, um, where are they? This number 13 right here. And all, just to let you know, all of the stitches come in um, to the screen and to the machine is black. So that would be a good time to change your color if you have more than one circle. So I'm gonna show you how I did the more than one circle. And I'm gonna go here and pull another small design. So I've got a circle and a flower and I'm gonna go into edit shape and I don't know that I told you earlier, but I have to tilt it back down to show the Oops. bottom ones. It's hard to remember when you're looking at the whole screen yourself. <laughs> it so it's, it's really good to have a second set of eyes here for that. That's for sure. So um, then you can just fill up your or not fill it up. You can do what you want. So did you notice I forgot to push that button? So I only got one little diamond and the rest are flowers but that's not what i was trying to show you so <laughs> but that's good that i made that mistake to show you so you can put one of one design and then just keep hitting the plus and it populates the previous design that you put in and if you wanted to change that just remove all but one So that one's there. And then I make sure I touched my um, repeat we button again. And then now it'll go repeat for a flower in a circle. So that's just a little tip there for you. There's no undo button. You have to just do the minus, get rid of them. So there's no uh, way to undo it. So what I was going to show you, I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And then I want to put another circle in a circle, kind of like I did with the net. So make sure you touch outside to deselect so you don't have any squares surrounding your design. 
and then go back into Shape Creator, select your Shape Creator again, I'm choose another circle, and then I'm going to go into Edit Shape, and I'm going to lock it. It's a circle, so it really doesn't matter if it locks or not. So, but I have the lock on because I do want to change the size of the circle and I just want to bring it smaller than the one I currently have in there. And it is easier to put a number in there. <laughs> <laughs> it is faster. It is faster. <laughs> but you can hold down Yes. That sizing button to make it go faster too. Yes, you can. And that's and to be more precise, if you're moving it somewhere, if that's a good to use the arrows um, for that. And then if I wanted to center this design, I center it and it's centered in the hoop, not into the design right now. So I'd have to center the um, I just kind of center it manually. Then when I go into embroidery edit, I can center all of my circles. So they're, that they're nice and even. So right when you're designing, it's not as critical until you go into embroidery edit. So then I just wanted to show you that we can put another design in there. And I'm just going to do all flowers. And so that goes up there. And then make sure my spacing is good. I'll go into design positioning that I've got the spacing that's evenly spaced. And right now they're in the middle of my line on the circle. If I wanted them on the outer end, I could change it to the outer. If I wanted them into the inner of the circle, change it just by tapping these, these positioning buttons. It's very easy to do. So I'm going to leave them on the center and then I'm going to touch OK. And now you can see that I have two circles and you can just keep adding circles or any shape that you want. And you can also, at this point, I'm in embroidery edit. Maybe I want a monogram. So I can go in to my monograms somewhere. Yep. So right here, why well, it's not a monogram, it's a letter. So I'm going to use this one right here, and I'm just going to put an S, and then I'm going to end the keyboard, and then, and then I'm going to center it. So I'm going to go into Edit Design, and this is kind of what I wanted to show you. So this will center, and then I'm going to Take the outer circle and center that. And then I'm going to take this circle and center. Okay. So now I've got to tap the other the S again so it'll be center. So do you see where it's all centered now? Um, and, and that's fun to do. And the colors are all different, so it is going to do a thread change. If I wanted to make this um, S bigger, we could resize it and make it a little bigger, a little heftier. And it's telling me that's as big as they would let me go. So I'm just going to leave it like that and just tap out of the circle. And let's see, let's see if we see that a little better. So so many options with this shape creator. Um, I hope you play with it and just create your own designs and just have a lot of fun with it. There's just unlimited options on it. I've only shown you a few today, so I hope you can um, take that and inspire yourself. And thank you for staying with me. Um, I enjoyed today. I hope you did too. And if you did miss it, this um, I can... It's going to be on YouTube, I think. And it'll stay on Facebook so they can rewatch it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if they have more questions on the rewatch, they can leave those in the comments and we'll be sure to answer them as we see them. Okay. Okay. So thank you again for joining me and sticking with me. So you all have a good day and just keep on sewing. <laughs>